I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. I've been getting a lot of messages from people telling me how much they appreciate these videos, and I sincerely love the feedback. It means a lot to me. If you're someone who enjoys these videos, spread the word. Post the links on your social media, your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Tag me and I will happily repost. All of my information is at the bottom of the screen, and then of course at the end of the video like always. Okay, now that I've gotten that out of the way, in the past I've talked to you about pornography, research about porn and how taking your own naked photos or videos could be considered porn. And if you're underage, it could be considered child pornography. Could land you in a lot of trouble. Today, I wanna to talk to you about revenge porn. No, I'm not talking about porn where someone cheats or cuckolding. I'm talking about sexually explicit materials that perhaps someone has of you and is now distributing that material without your consent or threatening to pass them out without your consent. These photos or videos could be put online, could be sent to your friends, your family, your coworkers, pretty much anywhere you wouldn't want them to go. A recent survey conducted by the Cyber Civil Rights Initiative reported that of the over 3,000 individuals that completed their survey, 13% reported that someone has threatened to share sexually explicit materials of them, and 8% have shared it without their consent. Additionally, compared to men, women were 1.7 times more likely to have been victims. Well, what do you do if you're a victim? In the United States, there are currently no federal laws against revenge porn. However, there is a bipartisan bill introduced into the Senate and sponsored by Kamala Harris, the Democratic Senator from California. The bill is called the Ending Non-Consensual Online User Graphic Harassment Act of 2017, or the Enough Act. If passed, this bill would make it unlawful to knowingly distribute a private visual depiction of an individual's intimate parts or of an individual engaging in sexually explicit conduct with a reckless disregard for the individual's lack of consent to the distribution or for other purposes. However, the bill was introduced in November of 2017 and there have been no major action taken since. So, no current federal laws, but there are laws in 40 states and D.C. Most of them are misdemeanors, but there are a few states where it's considered a felony and can carry jail time of up to 10 years or more. So if you're thinking of trying some sextortion, it's probably not a good idea. And if someone is trying to do this to you, find out what the laws are in your state. You can go to cybercivilrights.org and then just click on your state and then make sure to screenshot any conversation where the person is threatening you or spreading your photos or videos. You might even wanna share the website with them so they know that not only are they doing something that's wrong, they're also doing something that's illegal. At this point, taking naked photos is very common. In fact, about 60% of smartphone users between 18 and 30 years old report having done it. But what happens to the photos after? I'm not trying to victim blame, but unfortunately, it's something you have to think about. You might find yourself having to ask your ex to delete them or ask them to not share them with people, and maybe they'd be nice and they wouldn't. But is anything ever really deleted anymore? I'm not entirely sure how the cloud works, but in the news it's pretty frequently reported that breaches happen. And you don't have to be a celebrity for this to happen. Someone has to just be mad enough to do it. A few years ago, I had my email and Facebook hacked into, and whoever did it posted explicit emails and photos from conversations with me and my ex all over my Facebook wall. I wasn't able to log into my account and they just sat there for days. Literally my entire family saw them and I was mortified. I have no idea who did it and it sucked and eventually I got over it, but you don't wanna have to go through that. And I'm not saying that you should feel shame for taking naked photos, but I do think that you should consider where they might end up and how you'd feel if that happened. Because well, it does not feel good. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.